The Panama Canal, an engineering marvel. Crammed with billions of dollars in commercial traffic, this canal is considered a wonder of the engineering world. Okay, vamos. Nicaraguan's Pacific coastline still untouched by development, but perhaps not for long. It could soon feature another grand canal, one designed to accommodate the largest ships on the planet. But even before ground is broken, this canal is filled with controversy. This is Techno, a show about innovations that can change lives. The science of fighting a wildfire. We're going to explore the intersection of hardware and humanity, and we're doing it in a unique way. This is a show about science. Oh, oh my God. By scientists. Now, Techno investigates Nicaragua's Great Divide. Hey guys, welcome to Techno. I'm Phil Torres, joined by Lindsay Moran and Marita Davison. And today we're talking about a story that is dividing the country of Nicaragua and it has environmental groups on alert around the world. And of course, we're talking about this proposed canal that would go right through the country and it could be huge. And Phil, this canal project, along with all of the additional development involved with it, would cut through some of the most environmentally sensitive regions of the country. And Lindsay, I understand behind this project is a Chinese national? That's right, a very wealthy and influential businessman, but someone who has no experience with infrastructure, engineering, the environment, or Latin America. Techno decided to take a closer look at the proposed canal, so we decided to go to Nicaragua. Turns out, it wasn't as easy as we thought it would be. Our trip begins with a warning from airport security. No pictures allowed. We are leaving the comfort of Panama. Our assignment, an up-close view of a proposed canal that would cut clear across Nicaragua and would rival neighboring Panama's locks. Nicaragua's canal would be more than three times longer than Panama's. There are faster ways to Nicaragua, but our route would be the safest taking us from Panama to El Salvador, then Costa Rica. From there, we would attempt to cross the border into Nicaragua by car. In the back seat of the pickup, we looked and acted like tourists. Word is journalists aren't welcome in Nicaragua. We're traveling light, going with just the basics. Anything that would make us out to be professional journalists would have to stay behind. The road to Nicaragua cuts through the northern section of Costa Rica. As the sun sets, we reach the town of La Cruz. This is the easy part, Costa Rica's side of the border. The Nicaraguan side is a different story. First, we submit papers for what they call a medical check. It isn't very thorough, two guys behind a desk. I'm asked a few questions and given a small square in return with a warning. Do not lose your ticket. Then it's on to our final stop. This is the customs building. The going is slow, no computers here. Everything is done longhand. How'd it go? Everything good? Yeah. Soon we are back in the truck and off into the Nicaragua night. Yes. So are we officially in Nicaragua now? We're yes, good? yes, you're officially in Nicaragua. All right. You, you can find so we made it. Okay. We're good. Yeah. We yeah. It. <laughs> this is the small seaside town of San Juan del Sur. Good morning. It is the quintessential summertime hangout in Nicaragua. It might be my favorite place on the planet, or at least one of them. It's easy to fall in love with Nicaragua. It is the second poorest country in the hemisphere. Only Haiti is worse off. Poverty is apparent, but still, this place is awesome. 
rural life constantly crosses paths with modern. This is the town of Gigante, a village of fishermen, like Daniel Rodriguez, who repairs his net the way his father taught him. <laughs> Life is simple, sustained by the sea. Red snapper? But this way of life might soon become a thing of the past. Gigante could become the Pacific port entrance to the new Nicaraguan canal. The canal is the pet project of Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega, seen here with Wang Jing, a little-known Chinese telecom billionaire, promising to put up $50 billion to turn a long-held dream into reality. The route, announced in 2013 by Jing's HKND group and posted on YouTube, cuts through some of the most environmentally sensitive areas in Central America, including Lake Nicaragua. Many in the scientific and legal communities are concerned. This is the map of the, the company where it indicates all of the area of the canal. All of this is the area that is going to be flooded. Monica Lopez Baltodano is the director of Popolna, a group fighting the canal. Like many who oppose the plan, she speaks out at her own risk. We are worried, along with uh, scientists in the country, but internationally, that the canal is going to be the end of our main water resource. We have a huge task because the government actually has control over most of Nicaraguan media. I mean, TV and radios. The only way to see what's really at stake here is to get wet. So right now we're leaving Gigante Beach and right around the corner from it is where the canal is going to start. So what we see out here may change drastically. The day's windy and the seas are rough. Yeah. So right now we're getting hammered by the wind and the waves, but I want to show you guys, this is it. This is the proposed entrance and exit on the Pacific side for the Nicaragua Canal. There's a natural break in the rock formations here, so it's relatively flat, but there's a lot of good forest in there, no infrastructure, so they're going to have to do a lot of work to break through. Many fear the canal would destroy this, the raw beauty of the country's coastline. As we make our way inland, we see there is much more at stake. So, how close are we to the root of the canal? We are practically on it. So the canal will the canal is going go right through yeah, here? Because it's the lowest points in the landscape. Dr. Jean-Michel Maes is one of Nicaragua's leading scientists. He was asked to help document this area of the canal route for the canal's environmental impact report. And like me, he's an entomologist. We have a bit of history together. 15 years ago, when I was a kid, I wanted to come here to collect some butterflies. I asked around to say, okay, who can help me with that? And it was you. That's turning the people old. I think. <laughs> What is difficult is seeing all the countries being destroyed. So right now we're looking at the Brito River, and this thing is meandering through here. It's beautiful here, but that might change. If they make the canal, that will change. No way that might change. They will put it straight. Sure, they will not go meandering with the, with the ships. As we made our way down the road, our guides tell us to hide our cameras. The GoPro on the front of our vehicle keeps rolling. Just down the river stands a Nicaraguan army post, a single soldier standing guard, enough to send a message. Knowing Nicaragua's history, I worry that, that this situation and that 
the authoritarian way the government is pushing for the project, it's going to end up in a new confrontation no one wants to see. It is evening along the western coast of Nicaragua. We're here on a mission to get an up-close view of the land that could be impacted by the massive canal that could come to this country. Oh, gosh. So one of the many incredible things about Nicaragua is we were just driving down the road, and right now we're looking at about 12 howler monkeys. It's incredible. It's too amazing. The monkeys are just some of the roadside attractions here. Nicaragua is an amazing country full of diverse wildlife. That's why building a canal here is so controversial, especially when it comes to Lake Nicaragua, or as the locals refer to it, Lake Cosibolca. Lake Cosibolca is actually the jewel of the crown for, for this country, because no other body of water has the water in quality and quantity of this lake. Professor Salvador Montenegro Guillén is one of Nicaragua's leading scientists. He was once the head of the Center for Research in Water Resources of Nicaragua, until he spoke out against the canal. So critics like yourself weren't welcome. I am not against the initiative. My criticism is in regards of how the uh, design has been imposed. We would hear that often in Nicaragua. The issue with the lake is complex. People who speak out do so at their own risk. We traveled to the lakefront village of Cardenas to see if we could get some answers. Cardenas is poor. On this day, the entire village had no power. We met a mother and her young son who invited us into their small flat. So basically, she was saying that no. They don't have power right now. They don't even have water in this place. She has to go to a well down the street in order to get water. So, you know, it seems kind of crazy. $50 billion project to make a canal out there in the water when right here they could use some basic help. Like most of the people in this village, Margarita hasn't heard much about the canal plan, but she's not against it. Everyone is looking for ways out of the poverty here. They have been told a canal would provide a significant boost to the economy. Monica Lopez Baltodano is a lawyer trying to organize communities living along the proposed canal route. If not the canal, then what do you think is the fix here? Why don't we invest into an irrigation system? They sell people dreams that a huge investment like this is going to change completely the economical system in Nicaragua and the poverty in Nicaragua because it's completely unreal. It doesn't work that way. In my legal opinion, it's completely evident that the canal law, it's against the Constitution. While the legal battle continues, a group of scientists are collecting data to provide their own arguments against the canal. One is Dr. Catherine Vaman, a microbiologist. She's a research scientist at the University of Central America. But that's her new job, before she worked closely with Dr. Salvador Montenegro. So why the change in jobs? Well, uh, I was slowly forced out. Why do you think you were really forced out? Uh, because of the canal issue. You are a scientist. You look at what the data presents, and you do your analysis. Exactly. Yet if they don't agree with it, all of a sudden you had to leave. Vaman wanted to show us why she opposes the canal here. There is no better way to understand Lake Nicaragua than this. This isn't exactly what we planned. The waves and wind are brutal. Soon we'd even lose one of our cameras. So we're here in the middle of Lake Nicaragua and one of the national newspapers took something like this into the lake. This is a depth finder. And what they did is they went up and down the proposed canal route. What they found, it's shallow, much too shallow for any of those giant super tankers. 
utilizando un moderno sonar de vista. This documentary from the independent Nicaraguan newspaper Confidencial followed the proposed route through the lake, taking depth measurements all along the suggested path. Super tankers would require a depth of 30 meters, or 98 feet. Most of the lake just isn't that deep. That means that they would have to dig out 20 meters almost. How are they going to get these sediments out? Where are they going to put it? What does that mean for the lake? There needs to be more studies done. And judging by the conditions we saw, dredging would be a nightmare, something Dr. Montenegro showed us on his computer. That's the wind going across wow. the canal, yes? Yeah. So the canal is bad for the lake, and the lake is bad for the canal. Very bad. So why do you think they still want to do this? Uh, I don't have the answer why they want to do it. From the shoreline of Lake Nicaragua, we could make out the silhouettes of the lake's two volcanoes. Seismologists are also concerned about earthquakes. The region is an active zone. Engineering a canal would have to take earth movements into account. So these are the three most important fault zones, and the canal is hitting two yes. of them, two of the three. The people of Cardenas live a simple life. A canal would dramatically change all that in more ways than just their water supply. The date is July 7, 2014. On stage is the Chinese billionaire behind the ambitious Nicaraguan Canal Project. He speaks through an interpreter, but his message is clear. This video, posted on YouTube by the news organization Confidencial, shows what the canal will look like, with ships entering from the Pacific coast, making their way into the Brito locks. These locks are similar to the ones Tecno saw under construction in Panama's new canal locks, complete with basins to capture and conserve water. Tecno has come to Nicaragua to learn more about the plan. We visited the same area portrayed in the animation. There's plenty of politics. Our focus is the science. It is right here where I'm standing that the proposed Nicaragua Canal would begin. But the engineers constructing it, most importantly, this area is really low, easy to get to. The only issue for biologists is that the forest right next to it, it's incredibly unique. So these mangroves protect the coast? These mangroves fix it. So exactly, the mangrove fix all the, the sand system, provide with some kind of, of soil. That's not, that's not only sand, it's a mix. So you have also soil, so the other kind of forests can live here. Putting at risk all of our most valuable resources, affecting more than 119,000 people, just to get 25,000 jobs for a small period of time, it's, it doesn't make any sense at all. And I worry that we are putting all of our future at risk by destroying Nicaragua's lake. Like many here, lawyer Monica Lopez Baltodano does not trust the government. Information is difficult to come by, but the stakes are high. Many scientists view this as a potential environmental disaster. In March 2015, a special panel at Florida International University issued this report criticizing HKND's plan for lack of sufficient study. In particular, they said, quote, the canal, which requires removal of about 1.2 billion tons of sediment, poses a severe threat to water quality and unique aquatic life. 15 scientists were part of the study. One was the Smithsonian's Dr. Stanley Hecadon Moreno. We spoke to him in Panama outside his marine research center. 
So it seems like they don't quite have enough information on the environment. They don't quite have enough information at the moment, on the people. Yes. Yeah. But yet the plan is to go forward. Yes, they need more time, really. That was a message we tried to give them this panel, this outside group of panel of experts, that they have to do more water hydrological assessments. You're going to have to make life and death decisions based on five years of data. In September 2015, the HKND group posted this environmental impact report on its website. The report concludes the canal as designed, quote, would be safe and Lake Nicaragua adequately protected. It calls for a series of studies to be completed before construction, such as topography, geotechnical seismic risk assessment, sediment, and a salinity study and it moves the western entrance to the canal south by 200 meters. Telemarco Talavera, the Nicaraguan in charge of the canal authority, sat down with a reporter from Al Jazeera's digital team at AJ+. Va a ser el gran ganador para que Nicaragua no siga siendo el segundo país más pobre de América Latina y el Caribe, sino que haya más empleo, más educación, más salud, más infraestructura, más vivienda, más bienestar. Nicaragua is facing a big decision. Things do need to change here. When we interviewed Daniel, the fisherman from Gigante, I asked him to spell his name. I soon realized he wasn't able to. Hey. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yet the canal won't change all that, at least not right away. So Daniel here is, is a little torn because the canal could provide jobs, but also all these people are fishermen, and he knows that there's going to be an impact if there's a canal and a whole lot of ships. So why do the deal? If the Nicaraguan people aren't going to benefit, why do it? Well, first of all, there is some a, a political class in Nicaragua that see in the canal the possibility to get rich in a level that they would never be able to do it without this sort of agreement. Nicaragua is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. What I saw here was amazing. I had coffee above the clouds, and the techno crew and I took pictures while gazing at the billions of stars of the Milky Way. Politics is one thing. Putting the environment at risk is another. Many say this country is poor, but sunsets like this can't be bought, no matter what the price. Now, Lindsay, when it comes to geopolitics and economic power plays, you are the techno correspondent for the job. What does your gut tell you is going on here? You know, we have to ask ourselves, what is really the need for a canal through Nicaragua? We've got the Panama Canal, which is being widened. So to me, this is a classic example of a country, a poor country like Nicaragua, second poorest in the Americas, facing a trade-off between economic development and protection of natural resources. It's not an easy thing. You know, when you're there, it is so obvious that they need some economic change. I had visited Nicaragua 15 years ago to see my family there, and while it's kind of nice to see that things haven't changed so it still kind of holds on to its traditions, that also means there hasn't been a lot of progress in the country. So they need something. It just seems like the canal is probably not it. That's it for today. We are going to keep our eye on this story. Be sure to check us out next time here on Techno. Dive deep into these stories and go behind the scenes at aljazeera.com slash techno. Follow our expert contributors on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and more.